Hello and welcome to part two of a multi-part series on Campbell Scientific's wireless sensor network. In our first video, we showed you how a Campbell wireless sensor network can provide a reliable, low-maintenance, low-power method for making measurements in applications where cable sensors are impractical or otherwise undesirable. Hello, I'm Colin Daly of Campbell Scientific in Logan, Utah. In this video, we'll show you how to set up a simple wireless sensor network. We'll be using the CWS900 with a tipping bucket rain gauge. The other hardware we'll use includes the CWB100 wireless base connected to our CR1000 data logger. For software, we'll be using the device configuration utility and LoggerNet's connect screen. But first, we'll need to install drivers for our new hardware. To begin, you'll need to install the drivers before you plug in the CWB100. The configuration CD that you received with your wireless base station contains the device drivers that you'll need. You can also get these drivers from the download section of our website. Once the software loads, click the Wireless Base USB Drivers button. We do not want Windows to search for the software. Next, install the software automatically. Continue the installation. Exit closes the wizard. You only need to do this once for any computer that will be configuring the hardware in your Campbell Wireless Sensor Network. The manual, Wireless Sensor Planner, and Data Logger Operating Systems are also available on the CD. Once the drivers are installed, you're ready to connect the wireless base to your computer. You'll be using the Device Configuration Utility to configure the CWB100 and your wireless sensors. The Device Configuration Utility can be launched from LoggerNet's Utilities category or from PC400's Toolbar or Tools menu. First, select the CWB100 from the list of devices. Select the correct serial port. It will be listed as CWB100 and a COM port number. If that is not one of the choices, you'll need to reinstall the drivers. Click Connect. You also have to OK disabling any other communications on that COM port. From the Settings Editor, you'll need to copy the radio address by highlighting it and clicking Control c you can then paste it into another document for your records or keep it on the Windows clipboard. Keep it close as you'll be needing it again shortly. That is all we need from the base. Click Disconnect and disconnect the CWB100 from your computer. We are using the CWS900 and a tipping bucket rain gauge in this tutorial. Other Campbell wireless sensors are configured in a similar manner. Remove the batteries from your wireless sensor and connect the A205 and connect that to the USB port of your computer. Windows may recognize this as new hardware. Select the CWS900 from the left side. Select the USB serial port with a COM port number. Your COM number may be different than the one shown here, and it will be different than the COM assigned to the CWB100. Click Connect and OK to avoid communication conflicts. Press the CWS900 setup button. Now on the Deployment tab, select the base station address and type Control v to paste the CWB100 address that was copied to the Windows clipboard a few minutes ago. Next, select the measurement configuration right below. This is where we'll set up the CWS900 for the particular type of sensor we'll be using, a tipping bucket rain gauge in this instance, so that is what we'll select. This is where you can see the default names for the rain gauge data. Make sure you apply your changes. At this point, it's a good idea to check your sensor's performance. We'll connect our tipping bucket to the CWS900 now. Line up the notch, press the connector firmly into the socket, and rotate the locking nut. Let's connect with the device configuration utility again, and press the wireless sensor setup button. DevConfig triggers a measurement of the wireless sensor every five seconds, so it can be used to verify that the sensor is operating as expected. This is useful during setup and when troubleshooting. On the Settings Editor tab, you can test the sensor and check your measurements. In this example, we'll watch the TC, Total Counts, and IC, Incremental Counts, while we manually tip the bucket. Once that looks good, you can disconnect. Now that the base and wireless sensor are set up, we need to program the data logger to communicate with the base. You use the CR Basic Editor to program your CR3000, CR1000, or CR800. 
In this example, we'll use a CR1000. The CWS900 with a rain gauge outputs five values that will need to be stored in a variable array. There's a table in your wireless sensor network manual that gives the outputs for the different configurations of the CWS900. We also saw the specific outputs in the device configuration utility. We'll call it WS for wireless sensor. This array needs to be large enough to hold all the variables from all the wireless sensors in the network. Enter a public variable array of five values to store the total rain, incremental rain, internal temperature, battery voltage of the CWS900, and the radio signal strength. If you think you'll be adding sensors in the near future, the array can be sized larger than necessary so the program won't need to be changed later on. Your data tables will be configured based on your project needs. In this example, we'll store a sample of all five values from the WS array. Now into the body of the program. The CWB100 instruction is used to set up the polling of the base. Each time the instruction runs, it polls the base for the latest measurements. In this example, we'll poll every 60 seconds. Remember that the faster you poll the wireless sensor, the more battery life you'll consume. The fastest polling interval is 15 seconds per hop. If your sensor has to go through one repeater, two hops, then the minimum poll rate would be 30 seconds. The CWB100 instruction has three parameters. First is the port number. This is the control port number where the CWB100 data line is connected to the data logger. We'll use C1. The second parameter is the destination array. We'll use the WS array that we just set up. The third parameter is an optional configuration string. We'll leave this blank for now and talk more about that in a future tutorial. That is all that's needed. Of course, there is more customization that can be done, but we'll also address that in a future tutorial. Save and compile your program. We'll send it to the data logger using LoggerNet's Connect screen. Let's wire up the base to the data logger now. Power down the CR1000. Connect the CWB100G terminal to the data logger's G, not analog ground, which is labeled with a ground symbol. Connect to 12 volts. Then connect data A to C1, because that is where we put it in the CWB100 instruction. Now apply power to the data logger. See the LED flashing? It will flash red and green while it goes through the power-up sequence, then flash red every five seconds. Now power up your wireless sensor or sensors. Disconnect it from your computer if you haven't done so already. Line up the four pin connectors and securely tighten the screws. That will keep it watertight. The red LED light will glow for about four seconds, then turn off. Now press and hold the setup button. The blue LED light will flash up to four times, indicating how charged the battery is, then will stop flashing. Keep the setup button continually pressed. About four seconds later, the blue LED will start flashing again about once per second as the sensor searches for the base station. You can release the setup button now. The wireless sensor is now in auto discovery mode. You're waiting for the sensor to establish communication with the CWB100 radio. Establishing the radio link may take five minutes or more. Patience is important at this stage of the network setup. While we're waiting for the discovery to happen, let's review how your wireless system works. The data logger's scan interval determines the polling interval. After the polling interval has been received by the base station, it uses that information to pull the sensors prior to being pulled by the data logger. When there are multiple wireless sensors in the network, the base synchronizes measurements to the scan and pulls all sensors. It then stores the collected measurements so that it can transfer them as soon as the data logger requests them. This minimizes the amount of time the data logger needs to wait for a response from the network through the CWB100 base station. It also provides the fastest and lowest power method available. In order to conserve battery power, 
the sensors don't initiate any communication except during network discovery. Instead, they transmit only when pulled by the base station. Let's see if our sensor has discovered the base yet. No, not yet. See how the blue LED flashes about once per second and the red LED is not lit? That indicates it is still searching for the base. Remember, I had to press and hold the setup button to initiate auto discovery. We'll talk more in another video about how the sensors will initiate auto discovery on their own if the link to the base is lost for some reason. Okay, there it goes. Once the radio link is established, the sensor flashes its red LED and transmits its table definitions to the base. From now on, the blue LED will flash when the sensor makes a measurement. Then the red LED flashes when it transmits to the base. So in our example here, we'll see the blue flash followed by the red flash once a minute near the top of the scan. Remember that the 60 second scan rate in this example provides a relatively fast check of system components, but it will drain the sensor's battery within a few months. In practice, a more typical scan rate for wireless sensors is in the range of 5 to 15 minutes. Since the network has completed its auto discovery, we'll see the variable labels as defined through the device configuration utility. We didn't edit these, so the defaults are shown. In a future tutorial, we'll show you how to customize these labels. The last variable shown with the underscore SS is the sensor's RSSI, or Received Signal Strength Indicator. RSSI is a measurement of the power of the sensor's radio transmission. It is only measured when the CWB100 RSSI instruction is executed in the data logger program. We did not include it. That's why you see an NAN, not a number, in that field. We'll test the sensor by manually tipping the bucket. You can see that the total count and incremental counts change. The sensor's LEDs give you an indication of its communications path and battery strength. Quickly press the setup button. The red LED shows how many hops it takes to get to the base. No red LED flashes means there is no link. One red flash means that there is one hop to the base. It is a direct link. Two red flashes means there are two hops to the base, and it goes through one repeater, and so on up to four flashes. The blue LED flashes one to four times indicating general battery voltage. Four flashes means it's a strong battery. If you're only getting one, then it's time to replace them. Let's see what's going on at the base. The red and green LEDs stay on a bit longer while it's communicating with the sensors and data loggers. Now wasn't that easy? We'll get into the network planner for setting up the network and additional details of the CR Basic program in a future tutorial. Remember, install the drivers first. The CWB100 address needs to be entered into each sensor. That is how you define the network. Put the CWB100 instruction into your data logger program. You only need one for the entire network, up to 50 wireless sensors. The scan rate of your program sets the measurement and polling rate of the wireless sensors. Pressing and holding the setup button will initiate auto discovery. The LEDs provide diagnostic information regarding the sensor and its communication with the base. Be sure to check out our first tutorial introducing Campbell's Scientific's wireless sensors and look for our other video tutorials. Please contact Campbell Scientific to discuss your application and for answers about setting up your network.